Jay Bruce, and he covered him like a blanket. Matt Piott now will come in to attempt his second punt of the evening. He had one for 54 yards, and he had a rush where he picked up a lot of yards and a first down. He ran for 26 yards in that second quarter. That was a great series by the Idaho State defense. Boy, they really stepped it up, but not much time went off the clock. Ha, or uh, Piat standing at his own end zone waiting for the snap. And Piat rifles one all the way down to the 40-yard line, and he's going to return the ball. On the receiving end is Darren Dubois, and Dubois brings it into Bobcat territory. A little dangerous, but it pays off. Idaho State with the football when we come back. Today. Oh, she as talkative as ever. Touch America will provide you economical fiber optic long distance service. Now, don't forget, I'm on the road all next week. But how will I tell you good night? We'll develop innovative calling programs for you. Do you know a hummingbird beats between 78 times a second? Sure. We'll open up a world of information to you. Honey, should we go to your parents' house for the holidays or not? Well, couldn't we just stay here? We'll make it easy for you to keep in touch with your family. How school today? And we provide service from right here in Montana. Yes, I can the dog. Yes, you can the dog. But there's one thing we won't do. We'll never call and interrupt your dinner. So please, call us. Is there something I missed? We're Touch America. Telecommunications from the Montana Power Company. I guess it's always been hard to raise kids. But now that we have our own, we know it is, man. All the negative stuff on TV and in the papers, it's important for our kids to be involved in a positive atmosphere like D.A.R.E. Well, we went to the D.A.R.E. program when we were in school, and it was a big help in my life. Yeah, mine too. We want the D.A.R.E. experience for our kids. D.A.R.E. Choices for generations. Bye. <laughs> That's well, Idaho hard. State uh, will have the football, and Sonny, they're just kind of hanging around. Yes, they are. The Bengals are in it, Bruce, all the way. They uh, would appear that momentum is being established, and they, they're right on top of it right now. Whitworth picks up about three on first down. The ball just shy of the 41-yard line in Bobcat territory. Big defensive series here for Montana State. There you see one of the cat dancers who's made the trip up from uh, Bozeman. Idaho State now with the football. Split wide to the right side is David Steele for the Bengals. Long count from quarterback Kevin McCarthy. Hand off to Whitworth and he has some running room and just pulled down by the Bobcats, Mike McCafferty. Nick Whitworth. He's very dangerous, Bruce. Uh, if you give him a little bit, he's, he's apt to break it at any time. You see him coming up inside here with the football, and he he doesn't go down easily. Look at that. McCafferty just holding on. Whitworth goes down. Whitworth now 45 yards on 13 carries. As we mentioned, came into the game, the junior had over 1,000 yards in his first 10 games for Idaho State. Four minutes left here in the third quarter. The Bengals threatening in mob, uh, Bobcat territory. McCarthy is hit, spins away, and now he has some room to run. Oh, boy, had a wide receiver wide open. And couldn't get the ball to him, but an athletic move just to get outside. That was a great effort on McCarthy's part. He was literally trapped at his own backfield. He, he somehow got away from it and had a receiver open. And Nathaniel Harrison, Sonny, wide open. He was. Just overthrew him. Fourth down now and then uh, about two. And the, the Bengals will attempt the uh, long field goal. 54 yards. Pete Garces, and he has the leg to do it. The ball put down. McCarthy, the holder. The kick is up by Garces, and it's good. Pete Garces, 54 yards. And the Bengals draw first blood here in the third quarter. 3.46 left. Bobcats lead it by seven. We're going to keep it right here, Sonny. And Boy, that's got to give you a boost to be able to do that. Well, that's a great kick, Bruce, in anybody's football field. 54 yards is a long one, and he hit that with a lot of room to spare. Wow. Garces now with his second field goal. He had a 32-yarder in that first quarter on their second possession of the ballgame. 
The Bengals are in it. 13 to 6. A lot of football yet to play. Whole fourth quarter and four minutes, almost four minutes here yet in the third quarter, and the Bengals are on the board for three. Special thanks to all our fans around the state of Montana watching uh, this evening's ball game here from the Holt Arena around the state of Montana on the TCI Television Network. A Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football brought to you in part by the Montana Power Company and Touch America. We're happy to uh, have you with us. Bruce Parker along with Sonny Holland and Bill Amberty on the sidelines and our staff man Rory Bowling. From the Holt Arena, the Bengals have some momentum. The Bobcats will get the football. Lathy and Tyler and Lamont Bell back deep to receive Garces' kick. That last drive uh, by Idaho State, four plays, only eight yards. Took one minute, 28 seconds, the 54-yard field goal by Idaho State. And the kick is going to come down a little bit short and bounce into the end zone. Lamont Bell is just going to let it go. I think everybody was surprised he didn't go all the way into the end zone. Yeah, it uh, was about a half a split kick, Bruce. Uh, very dangerous to handle. Wisely let the ball run into the end zone. Now, Garces uh, ties Jerry Roach from Western Carolina with career 50-yard-plus field goals, 11. Sonny, that's pretty impressive. I know you're kicking inside, but you still got to nail them. Boy, that's a long way, and a lot of them. There we take a look at the scoring drive. Four plays, 45 yards, one minute, 39 seconds. Johnson now on first down for the Bobcats. Gets up uh, over the 24-yard line. It'll be very close to the 25, so a good first down carry for the freshman running back. Johnson's drawing a crowd inside there now, Bruce. You see uh, six, seven Bengals in on that tackle. They know what they have to do when he has a football. And one guy not in the lineup for Montana State tonight. We've got to say hello to him back in Bozeman. And... Uh, all the fans for Brandon Van Cleve in the Billings area. Brandon uh, suffered a stinger last week and will probably miss uh, not only tonight, but also next week's game. So a tough loss for the Bobcats, losing an outstanding running back, freshman Brandon Van Cleve. Johnson now is going to be stuck behind the line of scrimmage and lose a couple, Sonny. And the Bengals seem to be a little bit fired up here. Well, this is what happens, Bruce. They hang around, hang around. The defense makes the big play at the end of the first half. They also make a big play here in the third quarter, and they get on the board with three. Now their defense is really fired up. Hard hands off to Johnson. You saw it there, and uh, nowhere to go for Ryan. Third down long now. Third to about seven for Montana State on their own 22-and-a-half yard line. The ball just shy of the 23. Kara Hassan goes out. Boyer will go to the left side. Fontes Jefferson to the right along with Fazion for Montana State. The ball snapped on the ground. Hart has to pick it up. Now he's got to scramble and try to run. He'll get up to the 25. And the Bobcats will have to punt. Another big series for the Bengals defense. Clock now winding down near two minutes. Left in the second quarter, or third quarter. There you see Matthew Piat, the leading punter in all of Division I AA football. Try to check and see what his second punt was in the ball game. Piat now waiting for the snap at about his own 12-yard line. Good snap from center. And Piat rifles one again all the way down to about the 26-yard line. And Dubois is going to run it again. Takes a chance, and it pays off. Still on his feet. And Dubois is finally knocked out of bounds by Matthew Piat. Wow. He's made some things happen here in the third quarter on his punt returns. And Sonny... They're in great shape with the ball inside Bobcat territory. Yes, they are, and we have a young player who's been a stalwart for us. Freshman Brian Oxland went down on that wall, took a heavy hit, but he did get up and walk off. And the Bengals will have the football on the Bobcat 49-yard line. Northern Arizona now up by 10 over Portland State with uh, 4.06 left in the third quarter, 27-17. That's the update from Flagstaff. McCarthy now under center. Great field position. And he's going to be hit in the backfield, but gets away. He's done that a couple times tonight. Good job, Corey Robinson. Made him pull up, Bruce. Made him pull up. McCarthy reversed his field, and Corey got back on his feet, come around, and made the tackle the second time. Corey Robinson out of Missoula had some help from Alex Selich and Jonathan Taylor. And here you see some athletic movement by McCarthy. And that's just good pressure by the Bobcat defensive front. Good job. There you see Jonathan Taylor in his defensive end position. 
A loss of about six on the play, so it'll be second down 16 for Idaho State. And McCarthy now will send trips to the left side, to the right side, single wide receiver. Whitworth is the lone setback across the middle. The ball is caught, and it could be six. Now they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. The reception made by Brian Goodell. And Goodell will now get down to about the 12-yard line. Steven Salo pushed him out of bounds for the Bobcats. And the Bengals are knocking once again. They are, Bruce. This is a big play for them. You know what they have to do. They're, they're way behind and down a distance. They're going to throw the football, and this is just a great running job. Just a great job by a fine athlete. So the Bengals now will have it inside the 12, just shy of the 11, first down 10, Idaho State. 32 seconds left here, third quarter. McCarthy has done a great job in the third quarter for his squad. McCarthy now rolling to his right, has time. Tucks it and runs. Duncan McLean there along with some help from Corey Robinson, Sonny. Corey's uh, covering a lot of field for a young defensive down lineman. He's, uh, he's going to be a great one. 11 seconds, 10 seconds, maybe the last play of the third quarter. And it will be. So after three quarters from the Holt Arena at the ISU Mini Dome in Pocatello, Montana State leads it by a score, but the Bengals are knocking. At the end of three, you know what the Wayland Tire, we don't price advertise. We do this for a reason. We want to make sure that we can talk to our customer directly to make sure that we can get the correct application on the car by asking the correct questions. Who drives the car? What road conditions are the car on? We'll never sell you a tire or a product that you don't need. You'll never spend a dime at Wayland Tire unjustly. Word of mouth is our best advertising, and we have done right by the customers, and they have done right by us. If you get good service, good product, and longevity out of your product, you'll spend less money in the long run. We're going to guarantee that when you come into our shop that we put the right application on for you, and when you leave, you have a peace of mind of going down the road of knowing that it's been taken care of right. We guarantee it, regardless of what we sell. No hassle. pass off. He gets it off and uh, completes the pass right there on the sideline. Great effort. Third down and two now for the Bengals. There you see McCarthy who now has thrown for 172 yards here in the ball game. Third down and go or third down and two. Whitworth alone setback. McCarthy again to throw and no flag is thrown. Lamont Bell was there on the defense for Montana State. The crowd didn't like it, but it was pretty good coverage by Lamont. Now fourth and goal, and they're going to bring in Garces again. Now we have to talk about it, that last field goal, as we mentioned, there you see Coach Larry Lewis. The last field goal that Garces made ties a 1AA record, his 11th 50-plus yard field goal. Well, that's a pretty impressive career for the kicker for the Bengals. Well, when you, when you have a four-year career in this building, you're bound to have, if you're a good kicker, you're bound to have a pretty good success, and certainly he has. Garces gets uh, three more, his third field goal, but the Bobcats cling to that four-point lead. The NFL on ESPN Sunday Night Football is the highest rated program in series on cable. Viewers of the NFL on ESPN have a 28% higher recall of advertisers. Women make up 30% of the ESPN Sunday Night Football audience. Showcase your business inside Sunday Night Football. Call 1-800-735-1744. When you were a kid, some of the best times of your life were spent in your own backyard. And with 16 ski areas in the state, you can experience those great times in your backyard all over again. You'll feel the rush, the charge, and the powerful sensation that makes skiing here so enjoyable, all at incredible savings. Enjoy great skiing in your own backyard. Call 1-800-VISIT-MT or visit www.skimt.com. 
started at the 25. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. Sullivan could be the hero or the goat here. There's the snap. The spot is down. The kick is up. Long enough and good from 42 yards out. What a comeback. Hello? Hey, Uncle Bruce. You gonna watch us on TV tomorrow? Three Rivers Wireless is proud to help make it possible for all of our Montana athletes to get their chance to be a star on TV. Get connected. Well, it's basketball coming up uh, next week from the University of Montana, the new Adams Center, where the Lady Grizz will host Idaho on Friday night at 7 p.m. And then it's uh, Big Sky Basketball, the Montana Grizzlies, hope, hosting the Gonzaga Bulldogs, the team that uh, was so impressive last year in the NCAA Big Show. That'll be on Saturday or Sunday at 7 o'clock. Lamont Bell receives the kickoff from uh, Garces, and it's in the end zone. The Bobcats will uh, take over first down and 10 on their own 20-yard line. And there's the scoring drive, six plays, 45 yards, 216. Garces with his third field goal, Sonny, maybe a slight victory there for the Bobcat defense. Well, they're keeping them down as far as touchdowns are concerned. Uh, offensively, we've really got to step up here, Bruce. It's really important for the Bobcats to get a drive put together. Casey Hart under the, the uh, controls of the Bobcat offense. Hart now with Johnson in the backfield. Gets some good blocking up front and, and uh, has the ball go through the hands of Jake Boyer. Catchable ball by Boyer. It'll bring up second down 10 for Montana State. That was well executed, all except the reception, Bruce. Got to catch those. Good throw there by Casey. You see his numbers throwing for about 158 yards. Through three quarters, the Bobcats have had the football about three and a half minutes longer than Idaho State, but the uh, gap closed in that third quarter. Hart now with second down and 10. Gets the ball off, throws it to, to uh, Hobbs, intended for Hobbs. Casey will be picking himself off off the ground there with the pressure for Idaho State. Their defensive secondary strategy now, Bruce, is the corners are picking up those two wide receivers man-to-man. -man. The safeties are playing halves of the field, deep halves of the field. It makes it difficult when they've got good athletes that can stay with those wide receivers one-on-one. -on -one. Ben Ta uh, Tanavasa was the man in the middle for Idaho State putting the pressure on Casey Hart. Third down 10 now as Johnson will come out of the ball game. Well, when you're in this position down the distance, Bruce, you, there's only one, need, one thing you can do. Hart, seeing it. Hart has some time, gets out of the pocket, finds his man, Hobbs, he drops the football, and a flag is down, it's got to be inter interference. He was all over the back side of him, I think, there, Bruce. I think they'll see that that's uh, pass interference. Referees now will talk things over. Looks like it'll be Montana State uh, with a break there. Pass interference will give the Bobcats an automatic first down. So a break with 13.53 left here in the fourth quarter. The Bobcats leading at 13-9. Their 10-point lead has evaporated. Garces has hit two field goals, one from 54, which was pretty darn impressive as it made it by a lot more than that. And then, of course, he just hit with the 21-yard field goal, his third field goal of the ballgame. First and 10, Montana State with the ball on the 26-yard line. Hobbs right side, Boyer, and Kara Hassan in the slot. The motion man is Lathe and Tyler. Hart from the shotgun is going to run the football. He looked up, and he had a lot of orange jerseys in his face and just gets back maybe to the line of scrimmage, Sonny. Well, the Bengals are really rallying to the football, Bruce. Uh, first of all, the coverage was good. The immediate coverage was good. The rush was good. And then watch the reaction as Hart scrambles outside. Just watch this. A lot of people rallying to the football. No gain. Second and 10. Casey Hart now with eight carries for 26 yards in the ball game. Third down, or excuse me, second down long for Montana State, about 11. Montez Jefferson. Boyer, Kara Hassan all to the right side. Uh, Lacey and Tyler in motion to the left. From the shotgun. Montez Jefferson open in the middle. And another drop as Jefferson had it in his hands. A tough catch, but he had a chance to get it. Well, the thing that uh, the Bengals are doing now very successfully, Bruce, is keeping the Bobcats behind 
in, in down a distance and uh, forcing them to throw on every down. Uh, here we're looking at third and 10. So another long third down situation for Montana State. Fontes Jefferson out. Chip hops back in. Hobbs, Boyer, and Kara Hassan to the right side. From the shotgun, Casey Hart also in the backfield. Lathy and Tyler. And here comes Idaho State again. To Hobbs, he's going to be dropped short of the first down at about the 33. And Montana State Sunny again forced to punt with 12.50 and the clock running left here in the fourth quarter. Three and out the last couple of series, Bruce. Uh, right now, offensively, the Bobcats are stalled big time. The Bengals' defense has taken over this game. Matthew Piott having a pretty good uh, afternoon punting the football at about 50-yard average. But Darren Dubois is back deep again, and he's had two great returns here in the second half to set up uh, Idaho State scores. And a high kick away by Matthew Piott. Dubois fumbles the football. Bobcats are in there. And I think he picked it back up. Boy, great job by Sean Flores. And we're going to take a break. 12-19 left. Bobcats lead it by four. I think one of the advantages to uh, Blue Choice is that collaboration, the teamwork between Blue Cross Blue Shield, the insurance company, and a dedicated group of physicians. We always felt that we have a very, very high quality medical community and a high quality medical center, but pairing us now with Blue Cross Blue Shield simply enhances that and, and raises that level of effectiveness even higher. Blue Choice, a healthy partnership between physicians and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Montana. Do you want more from AT&T Cable Services? Well, I do too. It's my job to help make it better. It's simple, really. We listen to what you want. Then we do our best to make it happen. So you want more from our cable company? You got it. I'm Kathy Consigli. Cable in the Classroom celebrates 10 years of free educational TV to your school. Sponsored by AT&T. Across Montana, it's time for Thursday Night Football. I'm your host, Dean Conklin. I'm your play-by-play -play announcer, Bruce Parker. Sonny Holland, color commentary. Gene McNulty-King, sideline reporter. I'm Ron Davis, sideline reporter. At 6.30 Thursday, it's the first round of the Girls' State Class A Basketball Tournament in Butte. City. Well, there you see it. The Bobcats leading it by four, but Idaho State has done a good job controlling the football here in the second half with a couple of field goals, the only scoring in the second half. And Idaho State will have it first and ten on their own 13-yard line. Almost near catastrophe there. Whitworth on the draw is hit by Josh Perkins and Charles Joe. But not before he gets over the 20-yard line. And a good call on first down. Well, big yardage uh, on first down for the Bengals. Bruce. As you can see here, a little draw up inside. Picks up seven, eight yards. Second and short. Second down, two now for Idaho State. Goodell is uh, split wide to the left side for Idaho State. Four wide receivers in the picture. And the McCarthy's going to run. And boy, he's done that so many times this evening as there's been some chances where he's uh, could be sacked and he gets out of it, picks up yardage there, and a the flag goes down. Looks like a possible late hit here, Bruce. I'm not sure. Take a look at this one if we can. Referee's talking about it. It is a personal foul against Montana State. And a tough one, Sonny. Yeah, you don't need that after... Uh Moving the chains once and tack 15 yards on the, to boot. That was an interesting call. But it's a good for a first down for Idaho State. The ball all the way up to the 43-yard line for the Bengals. They started this drive on their own 15. Well, the Bobcat defense is going to have to get with it here, Bruce. McCarthy on first down. Again to the air. Has a receiver, and he could go. He's gone. All 
the way. The Bengals been working for this, Bruce. Uh, been working for a big play, and they got one there. Chris Brinaw on the reception and the touchdown for Idaho State. They had run Lamont Bell off the play. There you see Coach Cliff Heisel not real happy about that one. But they had ran Lamont Bell over to the sideline, and Brinaw had all kinds of room right in the middle. Garces in to attempt the extra point, and Idaho State has their first lead of the ball game at 15-13. We could just feel this coming, Bruce. Uh, the last quarter and a half, I would say, uh, it's been just building. Garces makes the extra point. The Bengals now have their first lead at 16-13. Montana is Ford country. This year, six of us wanted to bring our snowmobiles down to Yellowstone. Well, that was no problem for my F-150 Super Cab. It's got the powerful Triton V8 and standard four doors. And during Ford truck season, I got it all with 3-9 financing. That saves me over $2,300 in interest. Up here in Glasgow, my Super Duty does everything. The Power Stroke diesel pulls my horse trailer, and the four-wheel drive means what Montana winner? Get to your Montana Ford store for the best truck season deals on the best-selling trucks on the planet. what you want to hear. Then Super 8's where you want to stay, where VIP members get guaranteed rooms and 10% off. Clean, friendly Super 8. All the room you want. Ugh. I can't stay here another minute. Not what you need to hear. Then Super 8's where you need to stay, as clean as can be, 1,800 times over. Clean, friendly Super 8. All the room you want. Garces will kick off for Idaho State. They have their first lead of the ball game at 16-13. 11 and a half left here in the fourth quarter. And Garces' kick for Lamont Bell. He'll just down at the end zone. You don't get many chances to return the kick when Mr. Garces is kicking off. And uh, Sonny, here we see the play. Boy, they just ran Lamont Bell off the play and had all kinds of room in the middle. Just the uh, missed tackle here set the whole thing up, Bruce. He sees what he has to do, and it's just a foot race to the end zone, which he wins easily. So it's 57 yards on the touchdown pass. Three plays, 87 yards, took just 55 seconds. Brinaugh on the pass from McCarthy, and the Bengals have the lead. Casey Hart now will bring the Bobcats out first and 10. They get the ball to Chip Hobbs, and Hobbs now will pick up about five. And Hobbs now will get up. He was uh, pretty much swarmed under by the Bengals. Hobbs now with uh, five catches for Montana State. And about 93 yards. Looking to go over that 100-yard mark once again. Now they say Hobbs six catches, 98 yards. So the Bobcats now will have it second down five. 10.43 left and the clock running here in the fourth. Hart has Ecker and Tyler in the backfield. They give it to Tyler. He's hit at the 25 and dropped. Down to the sidelines to Bill Amberty. Bruce Chip Hobbs' next catch will most likely give him 100 yards, and he will have his seventh career 100-yard receiving game, which will tie him with Eric Hopkins for the career lead in that category. Also, Bruce, this is uncharted territory for Idaho State. This is their first fourth quarter lead in a Big Sky game this season. Bruce? Thanks, Bill. The new quarterback in for Montana State is Dusty Broderick replacing Casey Hart. And Sonny, we'll see what Dusty can do. He's been a, a part-time starter for Montana State this year. On third down and three. The ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. And the Bengals are going to get the ball back there. Ben Kanavasa making the play for Idaho State. Well, the momentum was established, I think, with the last play of the first half, Bruce. And uh, coming in here in the third quarter, the Bengals defense stepped it up a notch, and we haven't been able to shut them down yet. Broderick has the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. Kanavasa there for Idaho State. Matthew Piat again is going to punt to Dubois. 
for Idaho State. Fourth down and five, Montana State. Piot kind of gets it off the side of his foot. It's going to come down to about the 33-yard line. And again, here comes Dubois. And Dubois is stopped by Cody Schrader, but not before he gets into Bobcat territory. Well, the fans are all excited here now, Bruce, as far as the Bengals are concerned. The football team's excited. They can taste it, and they're going after it. They're going to be tough to handle in this fourth quarter from now on in. There you see Dubois with a good effort there. But Idaho State uh, setting good field position on the Bobcat 44-yard line, first and 10. Nine minutes, 40 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. The Bengals on top by three. McCarthy. Hands it off in the draw to Whitworth, and Whitworth again with good yardage. And that's the difference in the second half compared to the first half. The Bengals were going second and long, third and long in that first half, and it's not happening here. That's right. It's, uh, it's second and short now, Bruce. Uh, makes a whole different story for the Bengal offense. The fans are into it. McCarthy now with second down and about three. The ball in the 43-yard line in Bobcat, or excuse me, in the 37-yard line in Bobcat territory. The handoff to Whitworth once again, and he spins his way inside the 35, and it's good enough for a, or a Bengal first down. Steve Salo is out there now, free safety, and he's kind of hobbling around. Wouldn't be surprised they'll go one-on-one -on -one against him. So it is a first down for Idaho State at the Montana State 35 or 33 yard line. McCarthy now with the lone setback being Whitworth. Short drop. And a good, again, a good play for Idaho State. Ladies and gentlemen, Eugene Mirador for the Bengals. Now one of only two Bengals to ever throw for 3,000. And here it is again, Sonny. Just a good quick opener for Idaho State. Throw the ball out in the flat and let the athlete run with it, and he does. There you see the uh, a cam quarter on the sideline. Interesting shot there. I didn't like that one. Second down, two now. Once again, short yardage on second down for the Bengals. Now first down is Whitworth to get inside the Bobcat 15. Down to about the 11-yard line. And the Bengals are definitely into it now, Bruce. Their fans and their offensive football team are moving the football just by the numbers. You can see up inside hard here. Whitworth, lots of room to run. Sean Flory's uh, there to knock him down first and uh, getting some help by Damon McNeil for the Bobcats. First down and 10 for Idaho State. Leading by three. McCarthy has a guy wide open in the end zone and overthrows him. He was open for six. That was Jesse Levin. He was wide open. Stopping the clock at 7.48. Bengals now will have it second down and 10. And the Bobcat defense, the last time in this situation, really stepped it up, Sonny, and uh, put the stops, and they had to settle for a Garces field goal. They've really got the Bobcats on their heels now. I haven't seen us come with numbers lately at uh, that part of the field. we got to do something. Mirador and, and uh, Garces to the right side. The ball handed off inside. And good running yardage once again for Idaho State. As Whitworth is going to pick himself up at about the six-yard line. To check the rushing stats. So Whitworth has picked things up here, Sonny, since the first half. Pretty slow first half for the junior running back. But he's now up to 84 yards. Well, he's certainly uh, been a big part of things this second half, Bruce. Uh, every time he gets the football here in this series, he's picked up big yards. Big play here. Third down four for Idaho State. And it looks like it's going to be a penalty. And I think this one's going to go on Montana State. But they're going to talk things over to see if there was any movement. Officials now speaking things uh, about where the flag's going to be. It looks like the Bobcats are moving back. And that should be a first down for Idaho State. No, it would only be half the distance to the goal. I'm not sure if it'll be enough for a first down. And here we see it again, Sonny. You see the movement here by the Bobcats made contact in the neutral zone and uh, 
It goes against them. Nick Morosco, there you see Nick out of uh, Glendive, Montana. And it's not enough for a first down, but instead of third and four, it's going to be third and one for Idaho State. So House in the backfield for the Bengals. McCarthy's going to throw on third and one. Has a man in the end zone. Pop touchdown. And Idaho State has jumped up 22-13. Just that quick, Bruce, that receiver come down the end line to the corner of the field, and the quarterback hit him in stride for six. I think everybody was thinking run, and Idaho State comes back with a pass, and McCarthy gets his second touchdown pass of the evening. Garces now will come in to attempt the extra point. This will put the Bengals up by 10. And he does. So with 6.52 left, Idaho State now jumping up 23-13. We're, we're going to keep things right here. And Sonny, let's take a look at this. And just good job here by McCarthy. Good execution. Uh, rolls out behind the run fake. Throws it back across the field. The receiver's right along the end line. You can see wide open. Jeff Main, the reception for the touchdown for Idaho State. And Idaho State now has just shot the Bobcats. Montana State has seen Idaho State score 20 unanswered points to take that 23-13 lead. Third quarter has been all Bengals, Bruce. Well into the fourth quarter now. And still a lot of time left. Six minutes, 52 seconds, but the Bobcats need to do something offensively, and they haven't done much here in the third quarter or fourth quarter. That drive, uh, seven plays, 44 yards for Idaho State. Took two minutes and 48 seconds. McCarthy to Maine, about a three-yard touchdown play. Garces now will kick off. been many returned by Garces this afternoon. Ball deep into the end zone, out of the back of the end zone, Lamont Bell, and the Bobcats will have it first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Garces really has a strong leg, Bruce. Every time he kicks off, it's over the end line. And we'll wait and see who's in a quarterback for Montana State. Will it be Casey Hart or Dusty Broderick? It appears that Casey Hart will come back in for Montana State at quarterback. There you see the senior out of Bozeman. That touchdown pass by McCarthy ties the school record of 22 career touchdown passes by McCarthy, and it ties Mike Maturik, who was an outstanding player for Idaho State in the early 80s, I believe led Idaho State to a national championship. McCarthy uh, etching his name in the Idaho State record books. Pass incomplete on first down for Montana State. That'll bring up second and 10 for the Bobcats. Casey throwing uh, unsuccessfully out there to Pat Karasin out of Billings. There you see Hart's numbers, 166 yards. Most of those in that first half. 6.42 left, the clock stopped on the incomplete pass. Hart now again from the shotgun. Steps up, has some time, finds Jake Boyer. Boyer still on his feet. And it's going to go all the way up to about the 28 before he's knocked out of bounds. So a good effort by Boyer. Eight yards on the reception, and it stops the clock. See Boyer making the reception here. He's a big, strong, wide receiver. Uh, takes on this tackler and breaks free. Manages to pick up another couple yards before he goes out of bounds. Third down two now for Montana State. As the crowd begins to chant defense here in the Holt Arena. The ISU mini dome. Third down and two for the Bobcats. Hart now under center, Brent Ludwig. Short drop. Ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. And Sonny, how many times have we seen that this afternoon? That's at least three, Bruce, where uh, Casey's pass has been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Good job up front by the defensive front people for Idaho State in knocking that pass down and fourth down. So Matthew Piott comes back in. Here you can see here Casey throwing, trying to get it over, and big hand goes up there. That's a great job. Tanavasu again for Idaho State. 
Dubois is the deep man. The Bobcats have to be leery of him. He's been the spark here in the third quarter. And fourth, a uh, very good punt there by Matthew Piott. Dubois now trying to come to his left and is hit and dropped by Charles Joe. You know, I don't think he knows what fair catch signal is, Bruce. <laughs> he's he's going to catch that thing every single time, and, and he's established great field position a couple times here in the third and fourth quarter. The only time in his career he's ever waved that hand is when he's waving to somebody in the stand. That's right. The Bengals lead it by 10 with 6.18 left, so it didn't take a lot of time off the clock, but Idaho State, once again, Sonny has the football. They've been able to uh, march the football successfully against uh, the Bobcats the last two series. That last punt was 57 yards by Pia. Punters do like to kick indoors. Whitworth now is hit behind the line of scrimmage. They're looking for a face mask, and I don't think they're going to get that call, but a good defensive effort there by the Bobcats. Cody Schrader there for Montana State. Alex Selich, Eric Axland. And here we take a look at it. We'll see if any part of the face mask was grabbed. Big hand comes out there. No, he's got him on the jersey all the way. Just great defensive effort there. No gain on first down. Second down, 10, Idaho State. The clock running now. Idaho State trying to use some time here. McCarthy bubble bobbled it a little bit and finally gets it off, and the ball is not free. Great hit there by Lamont Bell. Good tackle. Made him pop up the football. Brignier couldn't hold on to the ball, and it's now third and ten, and the incomplete pass stops the clock. You're going to see a very good tackle here out there by Lamont Bell. Pop that ball out of there. Third down, ten now, Idaho State. The Bengals have been impressive in third down conversions here in the second half. McCarthy. Again in the drop. Charles Joe grabs it and drops it. Good rush up front. Charles Joe in there making a big stop to the Bobcats. Boy, athletic move there by Joe. Axland was there to help him. But Joe went down, Sonny, and still got, uh, had enough presence of mind to get that sack. Went down, got a, reached out, got an arm on him, and pulled him down. Simpson will punt for Idaho State. Willie Jacobson back for the Bobcats. 5'11", the clock running. 10 on the uh, time clock. They're going to let some more time run off. That was a fine defensive series by the Bobcats. Bobcats with just 10 men on the field. Simpson gets it away. Jacobson signals for the fair catch and makes it at about the 44-yard line. But the Bobcats with just 10 men in the, in the ball game. Uh, I'm sure a lot of that, uh, Bruce, when this type of thing happens with your special teams, specialty teams, you, you've got a lot of people injured, and the depth chart sometimes gets rather confusing um, to keep all 11 players on the field. Duncan McLean tried half. to get in, but just couldn't quite get into the ballgame before the snap. So the Bobcats have pretty good field position, and that's been a problem here in the second half. They've been in their own territory quite a bit. Casey Hart back in at quarterback from the shotgun. Low snap from center, but Hart has some time. Hart is hit, drops the football. Ludwig picks it up and falls on it for Montana State. Bengal defense continues to impress Bruce, uh, putting big pressure on Casey Hart. You know, with the lead, they can just they know Montana State's got to throw the ball, Sonny. They're just coming. You bet. They're front four people just pinning their ears back and they're coming after them. Second down now and about 15 for Montana State. And things falling apart a little bit here for the Bobcats in the fourth quarter. That's going to go five more against Montana State. Referees talking things over. Don't think there's much to talk about here. Five yards marked off against Montana State. Hey, don't forget uh, basketball on the horizon here. Brought to you by Montana Power and the and Touch America on TCI across the state of Montana Friday night. There you see it. Women's basketball, the Lady Grizz hosting the University of Idaho. The inaugural game in the Adams Center, but the dedication ceremony will be Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Gonzaga against the Grizzlies under coach Don Holtz. Don't miss both those. Hart fumbles the snap. It's still loose. Idaho State has it. 
That sort of puts a lid on things for the Bobcats group. Uh, deep in their own territory, losing the football. That's what happens when you're way behind and down in distance and they just coming after you. Bad things happen. Casey never really got his hands on the snap. A low snap from center. There you see Casey making an effort to get it. And Idaho State there to pick up the fumble. I think uh, the guy that recovered the fumble was Seth uh, Wortman from his uh, linebacker spot. And the Bengals have the ball with 4-0-4 left. And there you see the quarterback comparison. There you see Casey. And it's kind of changed in that second half. McCarthy has really picked things up, throwing for 240 and a couple touchdowns. On first down, Whitworth, who's nearing the 100-yard mark for Idaho State. As we said, came in with 1,012 yards in 10 games. And the Bengals now have it second down in about four after a six-yard pickup on first down. You know, try to look at this one, Sonny, and, uh, to see how, how and when the momentum changed. But it was early in that third quarter when the Bobcats marched down the field and couldn't get any points on the board. Yeah, well, that's for sure, Bruce. Uh, the whole third quarter, the Bengals defense just took control of the football game, and I think they were buoyed by the play that they made the last play of the, of the first half. Stopping the Bobcats on uh, the goal line stand. That's right. They just came out and they were fired up and just never let it let the Bobcats get anything established. And their offense picked up the pace and we can see it on the scoreboard right now. Third down four for the Bengals. As McCarthy looks to the sideline and coach Larry Lewis, as we said in his first year, and looking for his first Big Sky Conference win as they end the 99 season. McCarthy now on third down. Drops the throw, finds his receiver. And it's another six points for Idaho State. Grenier makes the reception, another touchdown pass. And McCarthy breaks the school career touchdown passing record held by Mike Maturin at 23. And the Bengals continue to score points here in the second half, leading at 29-13. Well, anytime you're in a blitz package, Bruce, and your secondary is forced to play man, uh, and you don't make the tackle, it's six points, and that's exactly what happened there. Brignier on the touchdown pass, his second. The extra point is not good. Garces missed the extra point and hit the upright. And so the score will remain 29-13 with 3.21 left. There you see Garces. And it's Take a look at the uh, touchdown pass. Brignier. Take a distance. look at the numbers here. One-on-one -on -one now. Make the tackle. Well, you missed the tackle twice. Six points. There you see Cliff Heisel talking things over with Lamont Bell, the Bobcat return specialist. See some of the fans on hand at the Holt Arena in the uh, mini dome at uh, Idaho State University. Bobcats will go back home and finish the 99 season with the final Bobcat Grizzly match of the century. As Garces will kick off, some tickets still available. A lot of standing room only tickets are available. I'm calling the Bobcat ticket office at 994-4224. Everything else uh, sold out. But if you want some uh, some of those standing room only tickets in the beautiful Bobcat football stadium, you can get a hold of the Bobcat ticket office on Monday morning. Garces now will kick off. We'll try to get down to Bill Lamberty here shortly. Garces now kicking off, but not quite as deep. Didn't go out of the end zone at least this time. And I think Lamont Bell's going to bring it out for about seven yards deep. First, Bell. First one all night, Bruce. And he gets it up uh, to about the 37-yard line. Sonny, a good job there by Lamont Bell returning the kick. Uh, with, so with 3.09 left, the Bobcats again will start with good field position. That was a good return on that kickoff. Here's a scoring drive. Three plays, 31 yards. It took just 43 seconds. McCarthy to Brignier. Third touchdown pass tonight for McCarthy. He's now thrown uh, for a well over almost 300 yards tonight. First and 10 for the Bobcats on their own 37-yard line. Hart still in a quarterback. A lot of time over the middle to Jake Boyer. First down, Bobcats. Big play there, Bruce. Big, tall, wide receiver making a good catch. 
Boyer a little bit slow getting up. Uh, some scores from around the big sky as we see Casey Hart now with a nice throw by Hart as he finds his big wide receiver. Boyer just back after an injury, a little slow getting up. But a score from Flagstaff, and this will uh, excite a lot of the Grizzly fans uh, in the state of Montana. Northern Arizona leading Portland State 33-24 with 2 minutes 28 seconds left in the ball game. If Portland State loses that one, Montana all alone in first place in the Big Sky and a chance uh, to win the Big Sky title. Jake Boyer's been held out the last couple weeks, Bruce, with a bruised lung, and he took a good shot here. There you see Dr. John sure. Campbell, the Bobcat team physician, along with trainer Rob Higgs, helping Jake up. Hope the injury not too bad. They haven't held up any fingers yet. See no. how many how many how many fingers do I have here? No. 303 left from the mini dome in Pocatello. The Bengals on top, 29-13. Coach Cliff Heisel concerned about his wide receiver. I think maybe they're just giving time there, a little bit of time. Other big sky scores, Eastern Washington held on to defeat Weber State as Boyer gets a nice round of applause from the crowd. So Mike Kramer uh, defeats his, uh, his former uh, defensive coordinator, 30-27. There you see Boyer's stats, four catches for 74. We'll take another look at this, Sonny, and see uh, where the injury occurred. I think it's a pretty good shot here, Bruce. Uh, Bobcats have got so many people banged up right now. It's uh, tough to keep 11 healthy ones on the field. Casey Hart, lots of time to throw, looking for Kara Hassan, and oh, most intercepted. Kara Hassan had a step. Nice defensive effort there by the cornerback, going up and playing that football like he did. It's fortunate for the Bobcats, he didn't come down with it. Lamont Hudgens there for Idaho State. He's been all over the field this evening. Pretty good throw there by Casey Hart. Uh, he had Kara Hassan with a step, but uh, Hudgens closed quickly and made the uh, nice defensive play. Great effort. Second down, 10, Montana State. 2.50 left in the fourth quarter. Hart now. Steps back, has some time. Still looking. And finds the receiver, Kara Hassan, over the middle who can't hang on. Takes a pop, and that'll bring up a third and ten for Montana State. Casey stayed in there in a lot of traffic, uh, threw that ball on the money. That that was one that should be caught. We're talking about a young freshman wide receiver here now, getting a lot of action, and uh, got to give him a little slack. He gets a little maturity. He'll catch that one every time. Joshua Robinson, the man that put the lick on Kara Hassan there. So the Bobcats now with third down and ten. Four wide receivers. A tandem on each as Hart now from the shotgun. Johnson stays in the block. Hart now still running. Cross over the middle. The ball will be picked off. And a hit and a fumble. The Bobcats had it, dropped it. And let's wait and see who comes up with it. Wow, what a hit to jar the fumble loose. Kara Hassan, I think, put the pop on the man that intercepted the football. Whew. Sonny, hurt up here. I think it was Desmond Faison, wasn't it? 88 that made the hit? I'm not sure. We'll wait and see. Great hit. And who are they going to say have the football? The flag is down on the field at about the 28-yard line. Another flag down at about the 34-yard line. Hankies everywhere. Referee still uh, converging. Is there any time limit here? <laughs> Isn't there a limit on there? They're talking it over here. They got the... Uh, we'll get started here pretty soon, I'm sure. So still talking about things. Maybe Bill Lamberty can go out there and help him out a little bit. Illegal receiver downfield for the Bobcats and... Uh, so a break for Montana State. The interception will go for not, as it'll be offsetting penalties. So it should give the ball back to Montana State with a third down and 10 for the Bobcats. See if we can get a chance to look at that one. Boy, that was there was some hitting going on there. There were. Well, if the uh, things continue in the big sky tonight, Montana will be on top with a six and one record. 
Portland State and Eastern Washington will both be 6-2, and two, and Northern Arizona will be 5-2. and two. So maybe three teams have a chance to get into the 1AA playoffs from the big sky. Now I'm confused because uh, well, an eligible receiver downfield has to go against. There's the hit. It was Fazion making the hit. Wow. Balls on the field there. Uh, Brandon Reed got the interception, Sonny. But if it's an ineligible downfield, it can't go against Idaho State because they were on defense. So it, it, it has to be offsetting penalties if we're getting uh, what we think we should be getting from the officials. Brent Ludwig is there from Montana State, one of the Bobcat captains. Next week in Bozeman on Saturday, it's the Montana Power Fall Classic, the Cat Grizz Classic, sponsored by the Montana Power Company from Bobcat Football Stadium. It'll kick off at 12.07, and it should be a great one as the rivalry continues. Now they're going to say the offset. Okay. I'm sure it was Bill Lamberty. Bill, did you straighten them out down there on the sidelines to try to tell them what the penalty was? Crowd didn't like it, but at least we got the straight sto story right now. Again, that uh, Cat Grizz matchup, the 99th meeting between the Bobcats and the Grizzlies, and the last time you get to see them in this century. So Montana State will have it third down 10, 2:31 left to here in the fourth quarter. Kara Hassan and Hobbs to the right, Fontes Jefferson or to the left, and Jefferson to the right. Tyler and Johnson in the backfield to protect quarterback Casey Hart from the shotgun. And now another whistle. There's a lot of confusion on the field at this point, Bruce. Uh, Bobcat offense, uh, snap count was uh, certainly not in match with everyone. Some of the fans on hand at the Holt Arena, that's who's gonna go against Idaho State. So it'll be third down and five for Montana State. This could be the longest final 230 in the history of college football. Idaho State leading at 29-13. Now well, the Bobcats lost the ball. Then they got it back. Then they got a penalty, got five yards. They still got the ball, and they only need five yards for a first down. Third down, five now, Montana State. Casey Hart hanging in there for the Bobcats. A low snap. Hart now has time. Still looking. For Hobbs in the end zone, it's picked off. Joshua Robinson, a flag is down. Robinson's still on his feet. And I believe it's going to be a clip on Idaho State. If it was on uh, Ben Tanuvasa. Let's wait and see what the flag is. But I think this one's going to finally give the ball back to Idaho State. You know, this got kind of ugly here, Bruce, in the last three minutes. Uh, Flags on the field in every play, people jumping offside. Here you see the throw. Casey trying to get the ball to Chip Hobbs, but he was well covered. You see the interception coming out of the end zone, and then there's a flip right here. And Robinson now will finally be knocked out of bounds. Casey Hart making the tackle for the Bobcats. But Idaho State will have the football. Illegal block in the back after the interception. And the Bengals will have it first and 10 on their own. Eight yard line with just 2.14 left. There you see Larry Lewis who will pick up his first Big Sky Conference win in his coaching career at Idaho State. And the Bengals will break an eight game losing streak. And McCarthy will stay in a quarterback on uh, first and 10 for the Bengals. On first down, Whitworth, who's getting close to that 100-yard mark. In fact, he had 90 on 20 carries before that carry. And the Bobcats are going to call a timeout. We're going to keep things right here from the mini-dome. Idaho State will end their season with a 3-8 and eight record, Sonny, and uh, a good building block to go into spring football is what Coach Larry Lewis was looking for in this game, and I think uh, he got his wish. Well, Coach Lewis uh, spent a lot of his coaching career over there at 
WSU with Coach Mike Price, and you can, you can bet that uh, he's going to recruit some good football players. He knows the passing game. The Bengals are going to be all right in the future. And there you see Bobcat coach Cliff Eisel, the second winningest coach in Bobcat football history. And the Bengal, who's real happy right now with his squad on top, 29-13. We're going to have Bill Lamberty uh, after the game with an interview with Coach uh, Larry Lewis. And we see Bill on the sideline right now. Special thanks goes out to him for working his first Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. And the Bengals talking things over. They'll have it now. Second down and about nine from their own nine-yard line. Not much of a chance here, Sonny, probably to throw the football. They just want to take the time off the clock. McCarthy taking his time. Hands off to Whitworth once again. He's going to work for us here in the second half. And flags flying. Woodbury making the tackle for Montana State. Mike, the six-foot sophomore out of Glen Rock, Wyoming, from his strong safety spot. And the flags were thrown near the feet from, of Charlie Dehoney, the six-foot, two, uh, six two, 270 pound freshman out of San Diego, California. Looks like the preliminary signal of holding against the Bengals. The penalty is refused. The penalty refused by Montana State. They'd rather uh, take the time in the play. So it'll be third down for Idaho State. Third down in about seven for the Bengals. McCarthy, very slow start in the first half, Sonny, but uh, he's he only sure 92 came yards. On big time in the second half, Bruce. He's had a great second half. He's going to throw this time, and he's going to be hit and dropped for a sack. And a good defensive play there by Montana State. Making the tackle was Mike McCafferty. There you see Mike. And Bill Lamberty the talked about that with George Booker moving him to the outside. And he's had a good football game for the Bobcats. He really has. He's a certainly big, strong young man playing well out there at that defensive end spot. That gives us two or three young football players a defensive end that are doing a fine job. So another timeout called by Montana State. It's going to be fourth down. Simpson will come in to punt for Idaho State, but not uh, before the timeout is taken by Montana State to stop the clock with 1.58 left. And Sonny, our final Big Sky football game of the season. Enjoyed working with you? Well, it's been my pleasure, Bruce. I, uh, I'm enjoying uh, football in general this fall, being able to see all levels, Class C, six-man, Class B, eight man, double A, Class A, Frontier Conference, and Big Sky. It's been exciting. And a special thanks to the Montana Power Company uh, for bringing all this to the folks around the state of Montana on TCI Cable. Simpson now will punt. Uh, he's standing in his own end zone. And don't forget, Monday night basketball right around the corner. Looking forward to that. Uh, working with the cast and crew, Ron Davis, Gene McNulty King, of course, Dean Conklin, the host of these broadcasts. And our man, the director, Rip Cook, and our producer, Dan Rapcook. Jacobson catches it and is popped. That had the looks of a big time hit all the way, Bruce. He had him zeroed in. Uh, I wasn't sure I saw a fair catch wave for him. No, I don't think he did. And a, a resident referee, stat man extraordinaire, Rory Bowling, I don't think he saw any fair catch. There you see Willie Jacobson. I don't think he called for one. I guess he's supposed to give him a couple yards to catch the football. And not people not real happy about this. I think they're talking about it now, but uh, geez, Sonny, I don't think I saw, I saw Willie. Personal foul. It's going to be a personal foul. And they get the ball Interference catch. with the opportunity to catch the ball, I guess, is the call, Bruce. And I can buy that. He didn't have much room. The Bengals liked the play, didn't like the call. There you see some of the ISU cheerleaders. And Casey Hart coming back out from Montana State. Here's a guy, Sonny, that walked on to the Bobcat football program and has really made himself into a football player. Well, Casey's had a, a career that has spanned a long time, and he's certainly paid his dues. He wanted to play. He's had an opportunity to play as a senior, and he's, he's, a, he's an outstanding young man and has done a great job, a good leader for the Bobcats, and it's unfortunate that things didn't work out for the team as well as Casey Hart wanted to because he wanted them to. And on first down, there you see one of our young Bengal fans. 
trying to take the picture. Uh, second down, 10 now, Montana State. Chip Hobbs coming wide to the right side. Wide to the left goes Fontes Jefferson. Hart now, the ball bounces on the ground, bounces up to him. Hart now gets the pass off, bounces in front of Chip Hobbs, and that'll bring up third and 10. To 113 left here from the Holt Arena. And the Bobcats will hop on the bus and make the 250-mile trip back to Bozeman tonight. Tonight. As will we, Sonny. Wow. You know, that drive is a pretty drive during the day, but it's tough at night. At night, it's a challenge. No question. Brian Johnson comes back into the ball game. Ryan Johnson has rushed for a career high 116 yards on just 17 carries. So a great effort and a bright future ahead for Mr. Johnson, the freshman running back from Montana State. You throw Brandon Van Cleve back in that uh, backfield. A lot of great things ahead for Montana State. Hart throws the football. It was intended for Fazion, and he can't make the reception. And that'll bring up a fourth and ten for Montana State. And Casey Hart took a pop and is a little bit slow getting back up. He'll, he's a he's, tough. He's a tough young man, Bruce. I'll tell you. He just asked for a little help to get him on his feet there, and he's not going to stay down. Fourth down, ten. Bobcats. Boy, the Bengals in their orange jerseys, black pants, bringing the pressure here in the second half. Once they got that lead, Sonny, and it's been awful tough on the Bobcat offense. Well, they're hungry, Bruce. Uh, they haven't had a win, and they're hungry, and they could taste it, and the fans could taste it, and they earned it tonight. They went after it. And Hart's going to be hit and dropped, and the Bengals have the football. It was fourth anyways. They were going to get it back, but uh, Casey Hart fumbles. Idaho State recovers it, and with 102 left, the crowd pops up here in the Holt Arena, the ISU Mini Dome. Well, big night for the Bengals. Big night for Coach Lewis. Nice way for him to end his season. And here we see the tape. Here they come. Lately, here in the fourth quarter, uh, Casey's had to almost dive for the football on every snap. Been low, and that takes away his concentration when he makes a move to uh, run or pass the football. Well, if you've watched our doubleheader today uh, from Missoula and here from Pocatello, you've been part of history. First time a doubleheader with Montana and Montana State. The Border War Games against their Idaho counterparts. McCarthy will just take a knee with one minute left. Casey Hart on the sideline. Boy, what a tough guy. He was going to finish that last play. He's over there with Rob Higgs right now. And Coach Cliff Heisel with a lot of concern for Casey, who's been one of his guys here. There you see the sidelines from Montana State. But a special thanks to uh, Mr. Steve D., Dean Conklin, for coming up with this uh, great idea for the doubleheader in the Border Wars. It's been a, a logistical uh, challenge for uh, Dan Rapcook and Rip Cook, our producer and director. But they pulled it off, and we hope you've enjoyed these two football games. Great job by the crew here tonight. Led by Ripper. And that probably will be the last play of the ball game. We're going to try to see if we can get uh, Bill Lamberty with uh, the victorious coach Larry Lewis. And Sonny, uh, a tough loss for Montana State. Uh, had that 13-3 lead at the half. Had some chances. But Idaho State just got the ball rolling. We talked about it. They were hanging around. Well, that's exactly right, Bruce. You let them keep their heads up, and uh, as things wore on, uh, their success was certainly a momentum factor, and when they when they got things rolling, you couldn't stop them. The defense was all over the Bobcats, and it was their ball game the whole second half. We're going to try to get down to Bill Lamberty, but not before we take this quick break. We'll be right back with uh, Coach Larry Lewis from Idaho State. Montana's a big place, and telephones have been bringing us together since 1878. But you may not have noticed our company, building a fiber optic network, offering long distance and internet services, quietly improving communications for the last 14 years. Well, it's time we drop in and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm your neighbor. A pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you. We're Touch America, telecommunications from the Montana Power Company. Well, we're back from the Mini-Dome in Pocatello, Idaho, Holt Arena, where Idaho State breaks an eight-game losing streak and beats Montana State 29-13, the final game of the 1999 season for Coach Larry Lewis and his squad. They end the year on a 3-8 and eight, uh, mark. The Bobcats now drop to 3-7 and seven with one game remaining, and that being the 99th meeting 
of the Montana Power Cat Grizz Classic from Bobcat Football Stadium next week. And uh, Sonny, that should be an exciting game. We're still waiting for Coach Lewis with Bill Amberty, but it uh, should be an exciting game, the Bobcat Grizzly game. You know, it's trite when you say it, but no matter what the records are, it's, it's always a great ball game to watch. Well, we've seen it before, Bruce. I can look back uh, several times when it looked like one team or the other was completely out of it going into the ball game, but uh, you know, you got to give red-blooded American boys uh, an opportunity to compete against one another in that ball game well, and I'll guarantee you both sides are going to compete. And it should be another real classic. Well, the Bobcats uh, jumped out to a 6-0 lead, and then uh, Idaho State came back with a field goal. Montana State right back with a big pass play from Hart to Chip Hobbs. And then Hart ran it in from a couple yards out. And the Bobcats led it 13-3 at the half. That's what our score was. Garces had a couple field goals in that third quarter to make it 13-9. And then the roof caved in on Montana State. Let's go down now to Bill Lamberty and a victorious Coach Larry Lewis. Coach Lewis, you enter your uh, first offseason as an Idaho State head coach on a big, your first conference win. Tell me your emotions right now. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, this is everything we've been shooting for. You know, a chance to start a tradition. We talked today about today's the day that it starts. You know, for all these seniors that are leaving here, these guys are the guys that have they busted their hump for, for six years, some of them five years. They've been through three head coaches, and this is all for them. They're the ones who started it right here. How big a lift was that goal line stand to end the first half? Oh, a tremendous lift. I mean, shoot, that, that's a whole game right there. You know, to be able to go into the locker room with something positive, uh, I just can't say enough about the job they did that, at that point. You can list a lot of individual accomplishments, but it seemed like Darren Dubois' ability to give you guys good field position on punt return uh, was a big factor for the offense. I, I think it was. You know, we always talk about field position, and, and, and Odie's a guy that can get it for us, and I'd say we did a tremendous job. Our corners kept their receivers out, and uh, shoot, they just got us in great position. It was great. Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Bruce? Thanks, Bill. Uh, Coach Larry Lewis, happy, of course, after that first Big Sky Conference win as they go into spring ball on a positive note. And uh, we're going to come back, look at some final stats, wrap things up. Stay with us. Again, Idaho State beats Montana State here from the Holt Arena. Kids want to do the right thing. Hey, Winnie, you want to go get stoned and hang at the mall? No way! Why, do you think you're too good for us or something? When you do stupid stuff like that, I guess I am. Get a life. And they almost always do. Is there such a wrong, sis? Not really. Dare. Teaching today's choices. Celebrate! What's exciting about the new millennium? We'll see cures for diseases, people living healthier lives. Maybe we'll have peace in the world. Maybe no drugs. New technologies in science, communication, space travel. Who knows where it'll go? Celebrate the millennium. Celebrate our children, our future. Join the Missoulian and these partners as we count down to the millennium with a year of special sections, commemorative events, and community involvement. Celebrate 2000! TCI is now AT&T. And while we're changing the name on our trucks and signs, we're not changing everything. We'll keep bringing you the cable programs you love. And we'll keep working hard to serve you better. And the best part is, we're planning for a future full of exciting possibilities. All designed for you. taught them to be careful with appliances. At the Montana Power Company, we'd like to make sure you're careful too. Hey, Buster. Please have your furnace and other fuel-burning appliances checked annually. Your partner in safety, the Montana Power Company. They'll spot it at the 25. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. Sullivan could be the hero or the goat here. There's the snap. The spot is down. The kick is up. Long enough and good from 42 yards out. What a comeback. Hello? Hey, Uncle Bruce. 
You gonna watch this on TV tomorrow? Three Rivers Wireless is proud to help make it possible for all of our Montana athletes to get their chance to be a star on TV. Get connected. And Sonny, this is kind of the way things went for the Bobcats in the second half. Well, this uh, this is typifies the second half as far as the Bengal offense and the Bobcat defense. Uh, good execution on behalf of the Bengals and poor execution on behalf of the Bobcat defenders and two missed tackles there. Ends up six points on the board. Well, the Bobcats lose it tonight, 29-13 to Idaho State. We're trying to get to some of those final stats. And, uh, Sonny, there we look at it. Uh, it's really, really changed around in that second half. The Bobcats still had the edge in uh, total yards and in the time of possession. They did. Um, however, the, the uh, scoreboard tells the scene, and the turnovers are certainly in uh, favor of the Bengals. It was... Uh, Difficult time for the Bobcats. The Bengals hung around, hung around with their field goals, and all of a sudden they broke a couple big ones. Okay, uh, you just uh, some notes uh, in the stats. Ryan Johnson, his first career 100-yard game, 116 yards. Uh, Whitworth had 94 for Idaho State. Casey Hart uh, took a beating in that second half, but he stayed in there, threw for 204 yards, 266, and three touchdowns for McCarthy. We're going to come back and let you know where we're going to be next week. Stay with us. You're watching a Saturday edition of Thursday Night Football. Montana's a place where a handshake speaks as loud as words. Where friends are like family. And the best conversation of the day is around the dinner table. Touch America is proud to offer state-of-the-art telecommunication systems to homes and offices all across Montana and to be a part of the spirit that connects us all. Touch America, the Montana Power Telephone Company. In Montana, there's a story behind every Ford Opal. And this is a Ford Taurus value story. Get 1500 cash back plus .9 financing, saving you over three grand on Taurus. The first sedan in its class to earn the government's five-star safety rating. Get over 35 safety features like child-proof locks, safety cell construction, side intrusion beams, and anti-lock brakes. All with 1500 cash back plus .09 financing. So check out the Taurus value story at your Montana Ford store today. When you were a kid, some of the best times of your life were spent in your own backyard. And with 16 ski areas in the state, you can experience those great times in your backyard all over again. You'll feel the rush, the charge, and the powerful sensation that makes skiing here so enjoyable, all at incredible savings. Enjoy great skiing in your own backyard. Call 1-800-VISIT-MT or visit www.skimt.com. Long admired for the quality of its engineering graduates, Montana Tech has expanded and adapted its excellence to meet the needs of the modern technological world. Montana Tech's professional and technical communications department was created for those who not only enjoy writing and communication, but who are also interested in computers and multimedia applications. Montana Tech's approach to teaching gives students the ability to gain hands-on experience, giving them a valuable edge when entering the professional job market. Options for students include obtaining a bachelor's degree, associate's degree, a minor, or a master's degree. A certificate is also available. In a rating of the 100 best jobs in America today, technical communications placed in the top 20 and both short-term outlook and job security are rated excellent if you are interested in finding out more about montana tech's professional and technical communications department call write or email us montana tech of the university of montana brought to you by the montana power company You see it. That's where we'll be next week uh, in Missoula at the new Adams Center where the Lady Grizz will host Idaho on Friday night at 7 o'clock. And then the University of Montana Grizz basketball team under Coach Don Holt will host uh, one of the sweethearts of the big show last year, Gonzaga, under a new coach. And that'll be at 2.30 on Sunday. And just some people to thank, uh, quite possibly our final football broadcast of the year. Special thanks tonight goes out to Bill Lamberty. And uh, along the way, Ron Davis, Gene McNulty King, Dean Conklin, and uh, the host of all the people that uh, worked with us on the broadcast. Sonny, a special thanks to you. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, our stat man, Rory Bowling, 
who's done a great job all year. Uh, Rip Cook, our director, Dan Rapp Cook, our producer, and Steve D, who helped make all this stuff possible to bring you all kinds of football. Sonny, it's just been a great deal to uh, be involved with high school, Frontier, and Big Sky Conference football throughout the uh, football season. Well, it's been a great cross-section of the state of Montana, Bruce, as far as the sport of football is concerned, and I think the fans have benefited from this, and it's and they're the ones that uh, appreciate it in Montana Powers to be thanked. And if you want, send letters to show your appreciation for these broadcasts throughout the, uh, the year in, in uh, football. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our group tonight, uh, Bill Lamberty on the sideline once again, our staff man, Rory Bowling, Sonny Holland. I'm Bruce Parker. We're bidding you a farewell this evening from Pocatello, Idaho, where the Bengals of Idaho State defeat Montana State from the Holt Arena. With three generations of Kucheras passing from one to another in valuable years worth of know-how, Kucheras Furniture stands as a timeless monument to customer commitment and untouchable quality. Back in 1932, Mike Kuchera opened the doors to his first furniture store in Mile City, Montana. After serving the community for nearly 10 years, he relocated the store to Hardin. Kuchera's furniture was a mainstay in the Hardin and outlying areas for 15 years before Mike again relocated the store to the big city of Billings in the early 50s. In 1956, they moved into the home that they still occupy on the corner of 9th and Broadwater. The 50s were a time rich with post-war dollars pouring into the building of the family home, and Kuchera furniture was right there to provide the pieces to sit on. Mike Kuchera was in the thick of building the Billings community, sponsoring Little League teams and housing the Calvinator promotion that brought baseball great Bob Feller into the backyard of adoring little boys and girls here in the West. Mike always had a smile and a joke for everyone, even Robert Kennedy. In keeping with the steady tradition of passing on the hard-earned family business, Mike Kuchera employed his son Mike and began training him to inherit the Kuchera legacy. During the early 60s, Mike Kuchera Sr. turned the store over to his son, Mike C. Kuchera. Young Mike's work life had always been at the family store, except, of course, when he spent some time in the United States Army. 19, 1932 in Miles City. From Miles City, he went to uh, Hardin, and we farmed. Farmed and had cattle and, and furniture store, and then in... 55, I went to the Army and he moved up here. And then when I come back from the Army, we've been in it ever since. The family store went through some remodels in order to keep up with their expanding business. 
always staying true to the time-tested quality furniture lines that make Kucheras Furniture the first name in dependability. Kucheras still carries well-crafted brand products, such as Charles Schneider couches, Berkline recliners, and Richardson Brothers dining room sets. Kucheras Furniture has a long-standing working relationship with these companies. 40 years with Richardson Brothers alone. That in itself is a testimony to the unsurpassed quality you'll take home from Kucheras Furniture. Now managed by Mike's daughter, Patty, Kucheras Furniture offers the same high quality, yet more durable products and services than it did two generations ago. Service, real service oriented. 